Hi, in this module, I'm going to talk to you about uh, PGQL and running PGQL queries in PGX, but PGX is the in-memory graph server. I am Meli Anamalai, and I'm a product manager with Graph Technologies at Oracle. So what is PGQL? PGQL is a property graph query language that allows you to run queries against graphs. When you're querying graphs, you want to look for patterns in a graph. You're typically looking for a way to specify a pattern so that you can run the query and see whether this pattern exists in the graph. For example, you might want to uh, look for a pattern like this, where there's an edge from vertex 259 to vertex 869 to vertex 387 and then back. So this is a cycle and this is a specific kind of pattern. Or maybe you're looking for a pattern like this, where you have an edge going from vertex 528 to 326, and again, going from 528 to 569. So you would like to have a way in your query language to specify these patterns. So graph queries are all about finding patterns in your graph. You can have cycles that you're looking for, like we just saw, particularly useful in fraud detection and so on. You could be looking for paths. Is there a path between two nodes in this graph, two vertices in a graph? Or you can be looking for more sophisticated patterns. So PGQL gives you the ability to specify different types of patterns as part of your graph query. So you can specify cycles, or you can specify uh, hops one to, uh, with one to six hops, starting from node uh, or vertex with ID one. Or you can look for cycles and starting with vertex with ID one, and look for the top two shortest cycles. So now let's take a look at um, more, uh, some of the syntactical details that are available with PGQL uh, when you're using it to, uh, when you want to specify a graph pattern with it. So first, PGQL is a SQL-like graph language. What this means is it uses many different um, SQL constructs that you might be familiar with if you're a SQL developer. Constructs like select, from, where, order by, and so on. It includes functions that are part of SQL, like sum, average, min, max, and so on. The language also includes syntax for creating a graph, that is DDL, create property graph, drop property graph, and also DML for inserting, updating, and deleting graph vertices, edges, and properties of vertices and edges. And of course, the most important part of the language is the ability to specify graph patterns. The goal of using SQL constructs is to make it easy for SQL developers to write graph queries. So we have taken most of the SQL constructs and added the, the, the graph pattern specification to it. We're also um, aligning this language as much as possible to the SQL PGQ standard that is being worked on that will add graph um, pattern uh, matching to SQL. So let's take a look at some of the uh, syntax uh, examples for uh, specifying a graph pattern. So first you have a way to specify a vertex. Anything within parentheses is a vertex and you can enclose a variable. So parentheses enclosing V our name here, uh, our name and we are variables, and you're enclosing them in, a, in parentheses. Anything, uh, enclosing, uh, anything enclosed in square brackets is an edge. And again, it, it can enclose variables. You, you can specify directed edges, undirected edges, and also you can specify labels. So graphs can have many different types of entities together. You can have vertices of type accounts, vertices of type customers, vertices of type things, and they can all exist in the same graph. So you want to specify the type of vertex uh, that you're looking for in your query. And if you need to do that, you can have a label for that particular vertex. And then you have zero or more hops uh, or one or more hops and the syntax to specify that. So looking at a few simple examples and these examples are from PGQL specification 1.3. I'm selecting here 
A, B, and E1, where A and B are variables for specifying vertices, they are in parentheses, connected by an edge E1, which is in square brackets. And I'm running this query on a particular graph. So this will basically select any uh, vertex edge, vertex combination with the directed uh, edge uh, between them that I have in the graph. So it's basically going to select a lot of edges from the graph. Here's an example of specifying the cycle. Now I'm saying I want to select A, B, C, which are the variables for the vertices, and E1, E2, E3, which are the variables for the edges. And the pattern I'm specifying here is a cycle. So I'm starting with vertex A, connecting to vertex B, then connecting to vertex C, and you can see all of these are in parentheses, so they're all vertices, and then connecting back to vertex A. So this specifies the pattern of a cycle. And I'm looking, I'm searching, uh, or I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking to select vertices and edges that form such a cyclical pattern. In this case, it's a three hop cycle. And here I am again selecting uh, just the edges, directed edges that are connecting any two vertices. But as compared to the query above it, I'm specifying a particular label. I'm saying I only want to look at vertices of type accounts or only with edges of type transfers. And here um, I am uh, adding uh, uh, the, the hop uh, syntax to this. I'm saying I want to look at uh, all edges, uh, zero or more hops away from vertices of type accounts connecting to another uh, vertex. And I'm also adding a where clause where I say the name property of this vertex should have a particular name. So I want to select all accounts that are connected to other vertices by zero or more transfer hops where the property uh, name has the value Nikita. So you can see here that we have used a lot of SQL constructs. Uh, we have uh, the select, the from, and so on, as we, as we have looked at in, the, in, the, in these examples. And of course, we have the where uh, clause as well. So it's very intuitive to, to write these queries. And you can also have here the order by. So I'm selecting all vertices on this particular graph, and then I want to order by the uh, property uh, uh, called name. And here I have a where clause where I'm saying I want to only select edges where the amount property has a value greater than 1,000. So again, I have a select, I have a match. The match is basically saying select all edges, run this on this graph, and then, but only select the edges where the amount value is greater than 1,000. And here again, I am um, I'm very similar query to the earlier one, except instead of just selecting the edges, I also want to select the name of the vertices that this, uh, this edge is uh, connecting from. And now again, I'm qualifying the edge using the label transfers. And now I'm also qualifying the vertex using the label accounts. So you can see here, once again, intuitive way of writing queries just um, look at the match. You just have the additional match clause that you use to specify graph patterns. Uh, aggregation, so you can count, you can count the number of vertices. You can do a sum on the amount, uh, the property amount uh, values that you have in, the, in this graph for all edges, or you can select the max. So you can use any one of these SQL functions uh, to aggregate across uh, vertices, edges, and the properties of edges and vertices. So how do you execute PGQL in PGX, which is the in-memory graph server? You can execute PGQL in uh, the graph visualization tool, or you can execute them, execute these queries in notebooks, or you can just use a simple CLI for quick prototyping. You can, for example, use the uh, JShell interface to run a simple uh, PGQL query. Uh, or of course, you can have a Java application where you run your PGQL query and get a result set. So here's an example of just what a screenshot looks like when you're running a PGQL query uh, in, a, in the visualization tool. 
And you can run this in notebooks like Jupyter and Zeppelin for on-prem systems. And um, in the cloud, uh, you can use uh, the Graph Studio notebook. The PGQL syntax is uh, maintained in a website, um, pgqlang.org. And you can see all the, the latest specification, which is 1.3 and earlier specifications as well, has a lot of information, a lot of detail on running PGQL queries. So it's a great way to learn more about PGQL. With that, now let me go to this demo. So let me first log in here. So here I'm selecting uh, this particular graph. So I could, I have a couple of graphs. I'm selecting this particular graph. And uh, so I'm not going to specify the on uh, class here because I've already specified the graph. So here I could run this particular query and it's selecting uh, the top hundred uh, edges here. I'm just basically selecting edges from this graph. And I can now, in the visualization tool, I can go and add a few, um, I select a few parameters to kind of make it easy to visualize what is happening here. So I'm selecting to display the ID and what the edges mean. So we have a more meaningful uh, visual. Let me type in this different query. A similar query to the, above, uh, to the previous one, but where I'm saying amount is uh, greater than 1000. And it's running this query against this graph. And you can see here it selects uh, the, on the edge. And I can see here that the amount is greater, it's 10,000, so it's greater than um, 1000, which is what we have specified here. So let me run a different query here. So running this particular query, we get a different graph. And now let me finally run this query here. This is just selecting the number of vertices in the graph. So you can see here, you can also get the result in a tabular form. And of course, programmatically, you would um, be able to get a, use the results of this query in your application. So last query here, I'm using an aggregation function and I am selecting the maximum amount that has been transferred. So you see here the PGQL syntax, how we use the match class. And I hope it gave you a basic idea of PGQL and gave you a sense that it's a language that is really easy to use. Thank you very much.